As we uh, turn to our second reading this morning, after listening to the first, so you may hear this one and say, uh, not exactly related, but I'm going to relate it because I think they are. It is a call from Paul to the Corinthian church about um, making gods, about thinking about idols and things like that, because as we think of the one true God, that who is proclaimed in Psalm 103, uh, we also have to be real with ourselves with what we do with things like gods and idols. So we're going to tackle both of those this morning. Um, an invitation, not that you have to by any means, but uh, probably especially Psalm 103, if you want to put a finger in there in the Bible, I'll be referring to it a lot. So if you want to see it in reference, um, you can do that, follow along, otherwise you can just listen. Uh, that's Let us turn to God in prayer. Gracious God, thank you for your spirit, which does breathe, breathe life in the old bones and makes all things new, and it also takes what is written here that is inspired by the spirit and it makes it real for us. So I ask that you bless the reading, the preaching, and the hearing and understanding for us. Open up our hearts wide this day that you might have something new to tell us. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll be reading verses 4 through 6 from 1 Corinthians 8. So then, Paul writes, about eating food sacrificed to idols. We know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many, he puts them in parentheses, gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came, for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came, through whom we live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> this sermon is one that's reflective of a thought that I've shared with you before. I mean, it's a thought I, I have many times, but maybe not as often as I need to, you may find. Uh, in the rhythm of my own life, that of dad, husband, son, Pastor Nick. And it's almost funny and shocking to say sometimes, but it's true, that sometimes I need to simply sit back and be reminded again and reflect on the goodness of God. And I think we all agree that that's a me thing, right? That's not a God thing. God's not changing. That's something we deal with and struggle with internally. Because in each of those roles, dad, husband, son, pastor Nick, I, I seem to always be analyzing, how am I doing? What are people thinking about me in these roles? How can I take this to the next step and be better at what I'm doing? And ironically enough, even as pastor, when your workplace is the church, in a crazy busy life, you can get pretty distracted from just sitting back and reflecting again for a little bit on the goodness of our God. Our God. Last week we talked about our Trinitarian God. Our God. The one Jesus called Abba. Daddy. Father. The one he advised you and me to call Daddy too. Father. So today we're going to reflect on just that together. But before reflecting on something as awesome as the goodness of God, we must have an internal conversation, I think. One that happens in here. That's why we read 1 Corinthians. It is an understanding that while there is one God... That is undeniable for us. We have found ourselves to actually have many, many, many gods in 
this world. We on our human journey always have. Scripture is full of telling that story, that temptation. That conversation goes on throughout the Bible. And now this day, I would say now, there may be more gods out there than ever before. Paul wrote about this to the Corinthian church then. Specifically, they were struggling in this context with whether a follower of Christ, and therefore of God the Father, should or should not be eating this food that had been sacrificed and prepared for some other idol who was not God. And it was a good question they were asking. Were they forsaking God if they were taking part in this food? Was it an okay thing to do if, you know, their heart wasn't in the sacrifice part of it, but they were just eating in order to be friendly to one another, to those who prepared it, show some Christian love? It's a good question. Well, Paul tells them the truth. And he goes bigger, as he should have and did. He said, in this world, there are many so-called gods, so-called lords to serve. And these so-called gods, they live in heaven and they live on earth. These so-called gods are among us then. They're among us now. As dad, husband, son, Pastor Nick, in each role, I must be observant of the gods or the idols that have been created, maybe by me, maybe by society, that just beg for worship or service to them. Some I have created, I admit that. Some have just been put in front of me. I need to take the inventory on that which takes my focus away from Abba, Father, God. How do you know? Good question. How do you know what you have created to be a God? I found a pretty decent test that works for me, and maybe it'll work for you. Because whether or not you're buying into this whole other God thing I'm giving you, it's a pretty good practice, actually, just to be more mindful and intentional in your life and in your days. I invite you to pay attention to your day. How are you spending your time in your day? Where does your positive energy seem to go throughout your day? Pay attention to the thoughts that keep on popping up throughout the day. What are they always about, seemingly? What is taking away your focus in your life? What is our rhythm of the day? What is taking way more focus than it needs to be? What have we, in our daily lives, started to worship with our attention? our focus with our time is your phone the last thing you look at before you go to bed at night and the first thing you look at when you wake up in the morning do we stare for hours at the same channel on TV all afternoon and evening long do you think constantly about your job even when you're at home with your family? Is it your checking account or your retirement savings? Is it the stress of debt? We, each of us, have made our idols. We have. We should have the courage to name them because for us, in the end, there is only one. From the words of Paul, he writes, Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, our Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are things and through whom we exist. For us, there is one. Which brings me to Psalm 103, a reflection of on the goodness of the one God. 
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. He is the one who forgives all your sins, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. He is the one who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles, slow to anger, abounding in love, compassionate and gracious. Line after line after line, Psalm 103 proclaims the goodness of our God, our good, good Father. It is the goodness of the one who, when all the distractions of our life are swept away, that God's purity is unapproachably perfect. That is our God. Psalm 103 says that as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on and in the NIV, what's in front of you, it says these words, those who fear him. Now, to understand this particular reflection on God, I think we have to understand what that right there means. The fear of the Lord. Because in our vocabulary, I know in my vocabulary, fear does not equal love. As a father, it is not my goal for my children to fear me. So what does it mean here? Because you see, fearing the Lord is different. And this fear does, really does lead to love. Fearing the Lord in the Hebraic sense, cultural sense in which it was written, means to hold such a place of honor, such a place of reverence, such a place of prominence that it does cross the line into fear and trembling. It's the fear Israel held because throughout their history, they witnessed and then they told stories over and over again. They passed them down remarkable stories about this world and the powerful acts of God upon it. It was the God who was an intimate, covenant relationship with them was the same God who created the universe out of nothing. It was the same God that made the sea split open onto dry land. It was the God that made Moses' face glow like the sun. It was the God who flooded the world and then sent a rainbow. It was the God who could defeat a giant and also a giant army. This God of the Israelites, this God of ours, was and is amazing and incredibly and unapproachably powerful. So powerful that in order to be in the true actual presence of God was way, way, way too much for a simple human like you and me. Simply put, God is the most powerful force in the universe and beyond. More powerful than you can ever imagine. Think of the most powerful thing you can, and it's more. Yet, yet this God of the universe is our God and has invited humanity into relationship. Yet, this God of the universe is the giver of good, good gifts. And we must. When we think of God's gifts through the lens of Scripture, like Psalm 103, we must, I think, return with the writer to view all things, not as our works and our creations and our innovations, but as gifts from the Creator, gifts from the Father who loves us so much. Psalm 103 is a call for me to put so much of that other stuff that I idolize and I worship in its place and just return to the awe and the wonder of our God, the one Jesus invited us to call.
call Abba, Daddy, Father. I do not have to tell you that human life is precious. And I also don't have to tell you that human life is fleeting. Psalm 103 says our days are like grass. We flourish like a flower, it's beautiful. But our days like a flower, like grass. The wind blows and it says its place remembers it no more. Verse 16. That is the truth of human life. Its place remembers it no more. But we are remembered by God. Because from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear Him, who hold Him beyond awesome. Life may be like a flower, but everlasting to everlasting is forever and ever. And that's the love that is shown by our good, good Father. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, in all my inmost being. Praise his name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Thank you.